Greetings to our viewers. For those of you who are curious about the reasons behind Muslim girls and women wearing the hijab, we have some news that might interest you. Nabila chuckles as she expresses how people fail to comprehend the sense of empowerment derived from wearing a headscarf. Their confusion often leads to judgment and the assumptions of oppression. Women who choose to wear the hijab frequently face the derogatory label of oppressed. However, many argue that dismissing their reasons behind this choice does not promote liberation, nor does prohibiting girls from attending school because they refuse to remove it. Next, a 27-year-old woman from Bangalore passionately states, young Muslim women are taking to the streets protesting for their rights and yet you still insist that these women cannot think independently. Nag prefers to be identified by her first name only. Nag recalls the peculiar reactions she encountered when she made the decision to wear the hijab five years ago. The way people responded was quite bizarre. She reflects, My choice to wear the veil seemed to unravel their preconceived notions. I would receive hissing remarks like, Are you oppressed? Or are you feeling hot? Some even inquired about my hair and there were those who mistakenly thought that I had cancer. For Nag, the hijab also became a form of sartorial experimentation. She finds glamour in every fold and dramatic flair in the various colours. People often perceive my hijab as conflicting with my stylish clothes and makeup. But that's not the case, she asserts. When I walk into a room, I want people to see a Muslim woman accomplishing her goals, exploring the world and thriving. Other Muslim women, such as Wafa Khatija Rahman, a lawyer residing in Mangalore, express that choosing not to wear the hijab does not diminish their identity as Muslim. I opted not to wear it because it does not align with who I am and no one has the authority to dictate otherwise. She states, similarly nobody has the right to tell me that I should wear one either. In Varanasi, a conservative city in northern India, Falak Abbas initially disliked the idea of covering her hair. However, at the age of 16, her perspective changed when she watched Malala Yousafzai, the Pakistani Nobel Prize laureate, speak on television. Despite her head being covered, she exuded such strength. I was inspired and decided to cover my own head, Falak recounts. However, her decision faced opposition from her convent school. As they claimed, the hijab conflicted with the school uniform consisting of a long tunic and trousers. According to Falak, she was barred from attending class for three days and even missed a biology exam. When she raised her objection, the school contacted her parents and accused her of misbehaving. They argued that if I wore a hijab, it would create problems not only for me but also for the school, as it would reveal my Muslim identity, she remembered. But what's wrong with being a Muslim? However, she eventually yielded to her parents' advice who urged her not to jeopardize her education over the hijab. Now, eight years later, as she observes the events unfolding in Karnataka, Falak once again experiences a profound anger. Seaman Ansar, residing in Hyderabad, highlights how the hijab is being manipulated as a subversive symbol for political gains. I grew up alongside Hindu girls who covered their legs under their school skirts, a fact that seemed as ordinary to me as observing Sikh boys wearing turbans. She recalls, however, when it comes to the hijab, Muslim women are reduced to simplistic binaries. I am deemed traditional and oppressed if I wear it, and modern and liberated if I don't. Simon reveals that she and her sister initially chose to wear the hijab, but eventually abandoned it due to the lack of complete acceptance for their decision. While Simon's sister faced discrimination in her workplace, Simon herself encountered people staring gaze in unexpected places where they did not anticipate seeing a woman wearing a hijab, such as the gym, a bar or a party. The way people perceive you can be overwhelmingly consuming, Simon expresses. This fear resonates with many Muslim women who worry that the hijab will become the sole defining characteristics attributed to them. If you take away my hijab, what will be the next demand? My name is still Arabic. Will I have to change that as well to earn respect from you? In conclusion, the ongoing discussions and debates surrounding the hijab in India have revealed the complex experiences and perspectives of Muslim women. From feeling empowered and expressing their individuality 
to facing discrimination and being reduced to simplistic stereotypes. These women navigate a challenging landscape. The scrutiny and judgment faced by Muslim women wearing the hijab highlight the need for a deeper understanding and acceptance of diverse cultural and religious practices. It is essential to recognize the individuality and agency of Muslim women, allowing them to make their own choices without prejudice or discrimination. In this dynamic and polarized environment, it is crucial to foster dialogue, promote inclusivity and uphold the principles of equality and respect for all individuals, regardless of their religious or cultural backgrounds, embarrassing diversity and empowering women to make their own choices. Society can move towards a more inclusive and understanding future. And that's all for today. Stay informed, stay connected.